I'm going to install plastic corrugated roofing on my pergola for my deck. I have the rafters in. The rafters go from this way to that way. And then on top, the purlins kind of lay flat and they go from this way to that way. And the plastic roofing material is gonna sit on it going lengthwise this way. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna fill in See, there's spaces open there, and I'm going to put some wood in between there to keep wind from going in and ripping off my roofing. Okay, here is the top pergola. I have the purlins all done, and I put those little filler pieces in. See here, 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 so that the wind can't catch up underneath on the sides. So now everything is spaced apart two feet. The rafters are two feet from each other and the purlins are two feet. They don't have to be exact. So, and everything is very flat. You need to have a nice flat surface on top for the corrugated plastic roofing. And I'm using the Sun Tough brand in this case. It's important with these plastic panels. This is the solar gray color, but anyways, um, you have to have the right side up. It makes a difference to which side is up. So usually that's the side that the label is on, or there's some tape here that comes off this side out facing towards the sun. It's very important. Okay, I have just started installing my first panel here. The limit is between two to three inch overhang in the front, and you can put a gutter underneath that. Um, I have a seam here because I got 14 feet, and the sheets are only 12 feet, so I'm going to put my seam here, and they need to at least hang past six inches. Mine's a little bit more than that. That'll ensure that there's less chance for water to get underneath it and to leak. Here's a view from the top, in the original Sun Tough polycarbonate how-to video. They actually don't use closure strips, so I was trying to find these closure strips that'll work, and apparently you don't need them because the material needs to expand and contract. So it can't expand and contract if it's fastened down tight to these closure strips, so it allows it to, to do that. And then um, up here at the top, I'm gonna put some flush flashing around the back. And I'm starting now, because I don't have to get up here later and, and install it. It's a lot easier to get started right now. These are the screws you use. They have a rubber washer there. Another important thing to remember is that these holes that need to be drilled, they need to have some play so that the material can expand and contract. So make sure this hole is about that much bigger so that it can do that. This is the Greca style polycarbonate, which means that it's flat on top. And because it's the Greca style, you're gonna wanna overlap it by one. So I just have this overlapped by one, which goes from here to here. And if it was the rounded polycarbonate, then you're gonna wanna overlap it by one and two. Just from here to there is like 14 feet. So I needed to do a seam here. I just did the seam right where the rafter, I mean the purlin was, so I, you didn't see where that seam was. And right there, that's butyl tape. So that'll keep water from going up inside there. This is called the butyl tape. It comes like this and it comes in rolls like this. That'll make that water tight so uh, rain doesn't get up in there. Normally you want to have a six inch overlap, but I have like a three inch overlap because I don't want to have to see the double layer from underneath. I don't like that, that um, extra layer showing from underneath. So I cut it back so that it was hidden under the purlin. And with that butyl tape, and I got a pretty good pitch on here. I don't think that we'll have any leaks, but normally you want that to be six inches instead of three inches. And because I did three inches, I put the butyl tape there. Here's underneath. You can see that seam is hidden underneath that purlin there. It 
used to overlap and I cut it down and now you can't see the seam. I just about got to the end here. There's the beginning of that 14 foot span. And here I am just right at the end. I've been work, working my way. I haven't had to get on the roof because I've just been working left to right and just coming up through the rafters and the purlins here because I do not like getting on roofs if I can avoid it. And um, wherever there's a seam, this is a two inch screw and here's the seam. It's probably smart to put, you don't have to, but a longer screw where the seam is and then this is just an inch and a half where there's no seam. And then again, when you're screwing these down, you don't want to go too far down, just snug, or else you push right through the plastic. Get even back up just a hair. There we go. The directional winds come in from here to there, so they're kind of blowing that direction. So I put this drip edge, and it's sitting on top of the corrugated plastic. And I'm going to install it, installed it along the back side here, but now I'm going to go install it on this side all the way, and on that other side all the way. But that drip edge will protect the wood, and it will also help keep the wind from blowing off the corrugated plastic. Here is the top view of that drip edge. I got it all fastened to the back here. There's the corner. It's down there, and I still got to put a few screws in there. But this drip edge will protect the wood because the water will drip from here instead of straight down. And it will also keep the wind from getting in underneath and blowing off the plastic corrugated material. Here's the roof finished, view from the top. And here is one last view from the completed roof from underneath.